Hello everyone, this is B-Belt Dan, and I am back in Minecraft. We are in the Burrell class, Bird of Prey, but do not worry, this episode is not on working with on this Bird of Prey. It is still working on the Millennium Falcon. I am just over here for a little bit because I recently updated to the latest version of Minecraft, 1.11.2, and apparently I'm experiencing an issue that I'm trying to resolve. And that issue is the doors won't open like they used to. So, I'm trying to figure that because I wanted to come over, uh, came over here because I wanted to uh, do some work, but I was noticing that the doors weren't opening. So, I'm trying to troubleshoot that. And it has something to do with the command blocks. Uh, maybe not necessarily all the command blocks, but at least with this test for command, because it's a throwing up this output invalid selector argument 21, which is the coordinate. So something's changed. I've looked around on the, I do this, do these, I'm going to delete all those. Done. Uh, I think that's the one for that door downstairs, but um, anyways, I th yeah, I don't, I mean, I've looked around on you know, the wiki and stuff and online and things and couldn't find anything that might be explaining what's going on, so I'm just going through troubleshoot. I might have to rebuild the whole command blocks. Okay, these might not have been the right ones. Okay, see, that one doesn't have an output. That one does. So, but anyways, once again, we're not going to be focusing mostly on this. I do know that not all the command blocks because I don't know about the torpedo launcher, whether if that works, but I do know the command block for the teleport, that does indeed work. So I'm able to teleport in and out of the ship. So, but I'll be working on that off screen. But once again, we are going to be working on the Millennium Falcon. So let's go ahead and fly it over here and take a look and see what I've been doing since the last time I came over. First thing that I did is I took the entire um, file into MC Edit and I moved it back so I had a little more room to work on it, to try to centralize it a little bit better. Um, and it's worked. And then I'm going through and trying to kind of start fleshing out the details, trying to get the lines drawn out on how it should look and started working on the cockpit or at least the exterior and interior versions of the cockpit and this is the part of the of this project that's going to be taking uh, a while is to try to get everything looking just right uh, so once again the outs this is a very small ship so I know the cockpit right now doesn't look anything really like the Millennium Falcon cockpit and so once again part of that and I've mentioned this plenty of times in the bird of prey episodes is that in Minecraft the smaller the model is the less details that you get because you're limited by these uh, you know three meter by three meter by th three meter blocks I think they might be one meter by one meter. Yeah, one meter by one meter by one meter blocks. I'm sorry, not three meters, one meter. They're about three feet. So the, when you get into a big ship, you can put in a lot more details. But when you get into a small ship like the Millennium Falcon, it gets more even difficult. And if I try doing like a X-Wing or a Y-Wing, uh, forget about it. It's going to, going, only going to vaguely look like the ship that I'm trying to model. But as I persevere, I'm going to try to continue to work on it. And also, once again, as I mentioned in the first episode, is that I'm going to be mostly trying to go with having the interiors as best as I can, as close as I can to accurate, as opposed to the, I mean, sorry, the interiors. Did I say interiors? I don't remember. But the interiors are going to try to be as accurate as possible on scale, scale-wise, while the exterior is actually might be a little bit more larger to try to encompass the the interior so i'm still kind of playing around with it and seeing what's going to happen besides one thing that i do know is that the size of the ship has quite possibly changed you know 
throughout the history of the show. I mean, it's it's not unheard of for you know Hollywood to cheat, so to say, when they're trying to you know work on the scales of ships and models and things like that. Uh, you know, perfect example would be in the movie Aliens, the UPC or APC that they that the colonial marines take down to the planet's surface, that, if you look at it from the outside, you see about how small it really, really is. But once you, they start kind of filming the interiors of it, it looks remarkably bigger than what it really should be. And at a picture here, uh, see, this is, you know, and that's because they kind of cheated on it. The, you know, they realize that, well, outside, because, you know, they used an actual prop, quote-unquote actual prop of it, you know, for the exteriors, they realized that um, it was much smaller than what they were wanting, but then when they, that looks pretty good. Then when they started, you know, filming the interiors, you know, they needed a, a much bigger interior on the ship, so they started, so they kind of cheated a little bit, and they were kind of hoping that most people wouldn't have really have noticed. And I don't think a lot of people would have really have noticed that they cheated a little bit when they did it. But I mean, the the interior show kind of allude to that there's a lot more interior volume inside that APC than what really could have been when you looked at it from the outside. And I'm sure that they've done that even with the Millennium Falcon. Actually, I probably do need to go out one. And, I mean, a whole bunch of other ships in sci-fi. Because most people aren't even really going to, except for, like, the real true hardcore fans, aren't even going to bother, you know, trying to focus on, you know, the size of the ship from scene A to scene B and does everything kind of fit inside it. And so, and I'm pretty sure they, once again, they've done that within the Millennium Falcon because, you know, they probably had to expand sets. You know, like this area right here, I think, was a little bit, bigger what we than what we see inside the show this is oh but this is supposed to be the area where you know here's the infamous chess set and i think you saw luke and obi-wan over here they were practicing their you know or luke was practicing the ways of the force you know i think this scene was a lot bigger than what could have been allowed given the size of the linear falcon and you know once again i could be wrong so but that's just my opinion I do know that Hollywood has cheated before. So with that being said, where I'm going with this is that more than likely we're not going to be 100% accurate with the size of the ship in one form or another. So something is going to have to give you. The outside is going to be bigger. The inside is going to be a little bit bigger or smaller. But we'll try to get as close as possible. Either way, it's going to be, you know, definitely usable for anybody that wants to have a Millennium Falcon inside their Blender world. So, uh, let me look. So I'm kind of comparing and toying around. I don't know if that side looks right, but let's go ahead and mimic this side. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut out real quick because this part is kind of tedious. Let's see if we can get a outline done real quick because I might be going back and forth trying to get this to look round and all that type of stuff so let me let me take care of this real quick and i'll cut right back in okay everybody i am back and i have kind of somewhat completed the outline of the millennium falcon so that's pretty much the size that i'm wanting i am noticing right off the bat this cockpit area is not quite right where i want it so i'm going to have to work on moving that out a little bit. It should actually be more of probably two blocks out this direction. So I'm going to have to do that definitely off screen. That's going to take a lot of work. I may probably be able to get some of that done with M MC Edit, but not 100% positive. So I've also went ahead and kind of recentered everything because what I eventually came up with the center to be in the back didn't quite line up in the front. So it was a bit of work, but that was actually the hardest part is getting that outline done. 
I've already started trying to come up with the dimensions for the sides of the ship. And this is what I've kind of come up with. So I'm thinking, now there is a bit of a curve as the ship goes up, a very slight curve. So closer towards the hull of the ship, it's only going to be about two. Now may go one wide where there's like a little area there that you can't go into, but more than likely it's going to be about too wide right there and then it slowly starts to kind of bow up a little bit and with that being said that means there is oh that's right i have auto jump on there may be the possibility of to where this ship can have potentially three decks towards the center portion of the ship one lower deck uh, which we kind of saw in star wars where they were hiding when they went to the death star and a possible secondary deck above this main deck here, which was seen in Empire Strikes Back with Lando Calrissian when he was going to go get Luke Skywalker. He got in a little elevator that took him up and it looked like there was a hatch that opened up and he went into another area where there was another hatch, which I'm guessing that hatch was the exterior hatch. So there could be this this ship could probably be, you know, at least three decks high. Or at least, as you can say, like one main deck and two half decks or something. So, uh, we'll look into that. I am kind of struggling at trying to get the dimensions right on this. You know, I wish... I've looked online to try to find dimensions, and overall dimensions of the ship have actually varied surprisingly. I figured a ship like this from a, you know, a genre of Star, you know, Star Wars, which has been coveted by a lot of people would be a lot more accurate, but no, I've actually seen different dimensions of the ship, right, ranging from, you know, 60 meters to almost 100 meters and, you know, in everything in between. So, um, don't know exactly how wide it is, and especially the interior. I was hoping I could find some schematics on the interior, but nope, couldn't find any such thing. Uh, if y'all happen to know of anything like that, yeah, feel free to send it my way. I would love to have it. In the meantime, I'm just kind of just guessing this all. I know I'm going to have to, once again, extend this out a little bit further that way. So I'm going to have to redo this entire cockpit. But that would be a good idea. If, you know, it's not terribly bad for me to do that. Because maybe it will give me a chance to try to redo the cockpit. And I think I might have to redo this front and extend it out just a little, just a tad bit more. But, yeah, I think it's starting to look a little bit more like the Millennium Falcon a little bit by every single day. Um, you know, the interior is also something else that's been kind of, that's kind of changed from picture to picture, you know, or not picture to picture, but from reference to reference as far as, or some of these little back areas here. I think like one I saw this back area here was nothing but cargo holes, which really didn't leave a lot of room for the engine room. And then the other one was there was no, or there was the engine room, but there wasn't really any kind of cargo which kind of scratches oh some people scratch their heads well if it's this supposed to be a cargo ship then where's the cargo holes well maybe it's up front here but there's really not much room however though there is a theory that came out with it um on how this actually moves cargo around from place to place think of kind of like uh, you know an 18 wheeler or a big rig truck you know you have the actual truck the engine that pulls everything and the trailer so think of something like that and that's how this was actually a modified cargo freighter it's a real interesting take on it i think i might have described mentioned that in the last episode i can't remember but anyways uh let me see what do what else do we want to probably do today besides laying it out let's see the engine and i got a picture here that I'm looking at unfortunately it doesn't really show the engine space the rear engines but uh, let me see if we do engines I'm guessing I probably do is one layer low One layer 
I like so. Let's see. Or actually, I probably need to match it. Okay, yeah, I see. Oh. Okay, I see what I need to do. All right. Actually, with the engines, we need to do something like this. That's actually, whoops. Actually, that was, let me leave, leave that there. Actually, I would need to do something more along the lines of, uh, what would I do? What would I do here? Because the engines are actually only, let me pull in the black. We'll use obsidian right now just for a placeholder. The engines are actually more right along the lines of right there, the actual thruster parts of the engines. Actually more, yeah, it's like right along there and then got these little panels i guess protected that are sticking out along there so there would be almost kind of an overlap so to say like that yeah so it's something actually kind of like that right there almost to a certain degree hmm. so something to Something to work on, but um, yeah, I went ahead and I know I mentioned this in my other series that I'm just now starting where I'm doing a Star Wars scene. So if y'all like Star Wars, I'd recommend going to take a look at that series. Uh, first episode was just released, but I didn't went out and saw Rogue One and my opinions of it was I kind of liked it. Uh, you know, I thought it was very interesting and it shows that you could have indeed a successful star wars movie utilizing you know within that universe but you don't have to necessarily use the star wars something's wrong here yeah something oops did i do something wrong i think i did okay fix uh, what did i do ah okay i think i see what i did that you can use the, you know, you can still have a successful Star Wars movie without necessarily trying to rely on, you know, stuff such as the Jedi. And uh, this is going to be a bit of a spoiler. So if y'all haven't seen it, please go ahead and stop your video now. Still there. So I guess you don't care about spoilers. And so it, it kind of shows like they didn't have, you know, they mentioned very vaguely Jedis, but they didn't really show any Jedi's in it. They showed another type of group of people. Uh, oh, what were they? I can't think of what their name was called. Um, but they were force users, so to say, or at least one of them, you know, played by Donnie Yen, was a force user. And he was, you know, he was, he could use the force, but he wasn't strong in the force. I mean, obviously the force was able to allow him to be able to do things that because his character was blind so he could do things that normal blind people wouldn't do you know he was shooting off blasters he was fighting with his um you know he's fighting with his cane and all that kind of stuff which was really really kind of interesting actually that needs to probably be too high yeah we'll need to let's do that again and go too high on this one um you know, however, though, they didn't really try to completely get rid of what was already established as far as characters was concerned, because, once again, spoilers, is that there were some cameos, which I, from the, believe it or not, the original trilogy, uh, one of the cameos that I was really thoroughly impressed with and surprised with was the Grand Moff Tarkin cameo. I mean, that was unexpected and very interesting. I really liked how they did it. Kind of um, sets up precedents of about exactly, you know, where Hollywood is going and, you know, showing that now they can use actors that are dead and resurrect them for movies or at least their likenesses. I know that's been done before. I mean, it's not the first time. First time I've remember seeing that in a movie was actually um, Brandon Lee's final movie, The Crow, where they resurrected him for... You know, just but that was just for a few scenes with Grand Moff Tarkin. They 
resurrected Peter Cushing's, in, you know, entire likeness and character and persona. The person that they got to do the voice and the motion capture really did a good job with it. I mean, that's another reason why I was thoroughly impressed. But, you know, I mean, I probably would have been too disappointed. I definitely would have understood if they just casted an actor that looks somewhat like Peter Cushing or close to Peter Cushing and you know, complete act you know, went ahead and did a completely different actor altogether and just, you know, label well this is Grandma Tarkin and you know, I think some of us would have been smart enough to understand, oh well, you know, the original actor's dead, so of course they had to get some guy to play it. But it was still pretty impressive, which kinda of makes it eerie now with, you know, what they did at the end of that movie where they show the cameo of Carrie Fisher as or Princess Leia, I don't think it was Carrie Fisher was involved in it. They kind of hinted at that she might have done the voice, but, you know, I'm sorry to say I've heard Carrie Fisher's voice. You know, we all did in uh, The Force Awakens, and I don't see how that could have been her voice unless they heavily modified. I mean, it could have been. I don't know. Um, but, you know, they had a lot of, you know, interesting characters, brand new characters that was never really seen before. They had the cameos of what's that, Peter Cushing and... Uh, Princess Leia, and of course, Darth Vader, he made a, a cameo in it, which, you know, I think they could have probably actually cut that entire cameo out, and the movie wouldn't have been affected by it. Peter Cushing was kind of an important role inside it, so they could have actually casted any, or put any character in his part, but basically, I think, you know, Peter Cushing's cameo was, or Grandma Tarkin, let's say, Grandma Tarkin's cameo was um definitely enjoyed everybody else's i felt was just slightly pushed uh, as far as the technology was concerned i wasn't really too impressed with well actually i'm kind of impressed with the new tie fighter design uh but beyond that the you know up and coming technology that I was thoroughly impressed with was definitely the robot character oh what's his uh, you know, my mind is going blank on it, but there was a robot character in there that was, you know, I was thoroughly impressed with his character. He was, he was very entertaining. He kind of stole, stole the show. It's interesting about how in Star Wars universes, some of the robot characters can really steal the show. I mean, you had R2-D2 in the original trilogy. You had BB-8 in The Force Awakens. And now in this movie, you had this other uh Imperial Protocol Droid. I can't remember who he was, but... So, well, anyways. With that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and make this a short episode. We're going to go ahead and cut out... Excuse me, cut out now. But got quite a bit done. Didn't look like we got done, but I do know that I'm going to have to work on moving this out. Got the basic shape and also a pretty good starting point on where to start the... Uh, you know, the the exterior walls and stuff. So from here, now that I got this all laid out, I'm now debating of about what do I want to do first? Do I want to work on the... Because I know originally I was going to say I was going to work on the interiors or work my way out, but now I'm thinking, do I want to work on the exterior first or work my way out? I'm still leaning about working on to the interiors, but I'm definitely going to have to kind of, rather than try to do it all in a whole, you know, work on section at a time with that so with that being said i might actually try working on this room first try to replicate this area as much as i can to the original and then start with the hallway then work down the hallway and then work my way into the cockpit area and then work my way over into the area where they went up and they went down into the gun turrets yeah i'll probably do that i think that'd be a good idea so yeah not a whole lot done as far as building is concerned in this episode but we got a lot done for the future so but all right anyways i'm going to go ahead and cut out here so just want to say thank you for watching if you have any suggestions or anything like that feel free to leave comments and everything i really do appreciate hearing from all of y'all so and so but anyways just want to say thank you once again and i will see you in the next episode